much dust in my attic Addicted to the magic, the heroes and the static Too many soldiers never lift them off the mattress So I never lie down till I blow out the can I got too much dust in my attic Addicted to the magic, the heroes and the static Too many soldiers never lift them off this serial killer's life story is so horrific that he is often compared to Ed Gein. He didn't wear the skin of his victims, though, but attached it to the dolls he kept in his attic. Come join me at the Murder She Shed where we are going to discuss Polish serial killer Edmund Kolonowski. This is the place we honor the dead right from my she shed, and my name is Holly. Now snuggle in bed while I tell you a story of dread while sitting in my she shed. You know, I haven't said a rhyme in a while, so I had to throw it in there, free of charge, of course. First, let me apologize to any Polish listeners if I slaughter any names, which I'm going to. I'm an Oklahoma redneck that can't pronounce nothing but Southern slang, so just expect that it's gonna not be pronounced right, okay? Before you correct me in the comments. Monsters don't only just live in our dreams. They can sometimes live in Poland. At least this monster did. Edmund Kolonowski was born in Poznan, Poland on October 24th, 1947. In this story, I'm just going to refer to Edmund as Ed. Poznan is the fifth largest and one of the oldest cities in Poland. Its town hall is considered the most beautiful north of the Alps with its colorful buildings and friendly residents. It is home to the oldest cathedral in Poland, dating back to the 10th century. It also includes many old cemeteries that you do not want to miss seeing, because our guy Ed sure didn't miss touring these cemeteries. He was a constant visitor, only would often take the dead, or at least pieces of the dead, back home with you. But I don't advise that, though. Poland might not like that. Ed was a sickly child. He was born after a difficult delivery in which he had oxygen deprivation at birth and was autistic. When he started school, he was shy and was bullied because of a skin condition that caused scabs on his face. The oldest child of the family had died at the age of two. Because of this, Ed was often brought to the cemetery by his mother so they could visit his brother's grave. His mother did not like him like she had her firstborn and even told him once, I wish I had drowned you during your first bath. Ed's father was a former prisoner of the Auschwitz concentration camp and because of this became an alcoholic. When he was drunk, he would beat Ed's mom and Ed. Because of his autism, he did poorly in school. He repeated first grade, then the third and fifth were repeated. There were no special classes for autistic children in those days. He also began to show disturbing character traits quite early. He was nervous, restless, and difficult to control at school. He argued with teachers and got into fights with his classmates. Poor academic performance and mental problems meant that, as a teenager, he was actually repeatedly put in psychiatric units. He finished elementary school in one of these facilities. It was during his time in the psych ward. He became interested in girls. At first, he grabbed the privates, and then he would play with himself. Just looking at and touching women's wardrobe, especially dirty underwear, brought him satisfaction. Even during his visits to sanatoriums, he stole women's underwear from the lines after they were washed. Also, while in the sanatorium at the age of 12, older boys tried to RAP him, but it was a failed attempt, and he only ended up pleasing them in other ways. After a while, he started to like this guy. When he was about 13 years old, together with other boys, he went to spy on the corpses of naked women lying in the nearby morgue. These expeditions were sexual, exciting to him. They climbed a tree and from a distance of about two to three meters, watched the dissections performed in the morgues. At the same time, the boys would pleasure each other. He began making regular visits to the cemetery where his brother was buried, but not to visit his brother. It was to visit the ladies that were buried underground at the cemetery because this excited him. He went to the cemetery looking for fresh graves of women and then he would dig them up in a tent to perform sexual acts on them. He began harassing women and he once said 
His knees would buckle at the sight of lonely women. He would continue his education at a vocational school, which he did not finish, and he eventually got a job as an electrician. At the age of 21, he tried to unalive himself by stabbing himself in the stomach, allegedly because of a girlfriend. He had his first sexual encounter at the age of 22. Earlier, he had made attempts, well, let's just say gravity failed him. But finally, he found a lady of the street that taught him many things. She taught him about gravity, let's just say that. He married a woman named Sophia in 1970, with whom he had two daughters. At the beginning of the relationship, the couple had SEX up to 23 times a week. I'm sure it was his wife doing the counting. She was like, dang it, Ed, this is the 23rd time this week. I am plum worn out. I'm pretty sure that's how we got that exact number of 23. At least in my thinking, that's how we got it. And because his wife didn't want to get pregnant again, she refused to have SEX with him. And well, he had to get it from somewhere. So when a neighbor moved in with his family due to health issues, after she passed away in their apartment, he took his liberties upon her. He also started visiting cemeteries again and started taking liberties there too. He also would make his first known kill. He met a 21-year-old woman near a railway station. He introduced himself as a bachelor. They made an appointment for the next day. The next day after drinking coffee, the girl suggested that they take a train together near Poznan to her family village. He would say she offered him SEX in the woods. After they entered the forest, he decided that he didn't want an encounter with her. He only wanted her sexual organs. He hit the 21-year-old with a piece of wood many times until he noticed that she was not breathing anymore. He cut parts off and then buried her body in the woods. At this point, he had not started making the dolls yet. Ed and Sophia's marriage was annulled at his wife's request in 1975. Hmm, I can't imagine why. But it was not for these things because I suppose she did not even know about all these things that he'd already done. But because he went to prison for assaulting women. After getting out of prison in 1980, he started living with a lady of the streets named Gabriella. And they had a daughter together. On February 26, 1982, Ed visited the cemetery, dug up a 69-year-old woman's grave, carried her body to a field, where he stole part of the remains. The woman's body was cruelly mutilated. She had both her top and bottom privates cut out. The cut body parts were not found with the corpse. He started making dolls around this time. The dolls were made out of women's clothing, stuffed with sponges. After finding women's bodies from his local cemeteries, he would then dissect the organs from the fat tissue and sew the private parts, both top and bottom, onto his doll. And then he kept the dolls in his attic and would often visit them in order to lay with them and relieve himself. He also talked to the dolls like they were actual women. He would hug them, tell them that he loves them, that they were so pretty. On March 16, 1981, He murdered a 20-year-old woman. Her body was found with parts cut out. On November 9, 1982, an 11-year-old girl went missing. She left the house around 4.30. Although it was late autumn and beginning to get dark early, she probably felt safe. She calmly gathered grass for the rabbits. From a cemetery a little further away, someone was watching the meadow and the kneeling figure of a little girl. This someone was getting closer. He crossed the road, the excavation, and the railway embankment. She did not see him coming. He snuck up on the girl and hit her in the head with a wrench. Around 10 p.m., the distraught father reported her missing. The search was fruitless for some time. The body was not discovered until December 15th. It was a dog that actually found the body of the little girl. The dog smelled the intestines that were buried underneath some sand near the railroad embankment. He dug in out and they were able to find her body after that. The body was mutilated in a similar way as the corpse of the 69-year-old. 
private parts were missing. The police launched an extensive investigation, which, however, for a long time did not bring any results. His girlfriend, Gabriella, never visited the attic, but did often smell a foul odor when the attic door was open. She had seen what looked like a woman's DJ, just say that, burning in her oven once, and had to open the windows because of the smell. She obviously knew something fishy was happening. No pun intended. After the murder of the 11-year-old, he dug up a 20-year-old deceased woman. He removed the genitals and both of her B-R-E-A-S-T-S's, but lost one on the way home. He continued to dig up fresh graves. On May 6, 1993, while his girlfriend was out of town, he went to the theater to watch a new movie called Wolf, a Polish horror film with elements of romance. In the final scene, the coffin with the deceased woman, who turned out to be a werewolf, was pulled out. The body being pulled out of the grave captured Ed's imagination, and he left very excited after the movie. This, however, would be the night the making of his dolls would end. He went to the cemetery, dug up the grave, pulled the corpse out using a rope, and then cut off the organs. As Ed finished and was about to go home with a large patch of skin, he was spotted by a militia patrol. They had been laying in wait at several cemeteries in order to catch the man that kept digging up graves. And this night, they had finally seen him. They saw Ed's silhouette. They started chasing him. They wanted to shoot. They were ordered by their superiors not to kill, to catch the perpetrator alive. However, their weapons jammed and Ed disappeared into the darkness. During all the excitement, Ed had dropped the organs and was very tempted to go back for them, but he was too afraid. The day after Ed escaped from the cemetery, the militia found some important clues among the graves. Traces of small shoes. The culprit, as rightly suspected, was a short man. He also left behind the paper in which his shovel was wrapped. It was the paper of a plant producing packaging for cosmetics. The militia men checked that only one Poznan company orders papers from there. It was, I don't know how to say this, I'm going to do the best I can, okay? It was Zaololek from Poznan, which took the goods to pack the elf makeup. That's how they found Ed, who was a relatively new employee at Zaololek. He was hired as a locksmith who smoked the furnace in a maintenance man. He fit because he had a rich record, convictions for REPs and assaults, and he confided to doctors in the 1970s that he had already dug corpses out of their grave. They surrounded Zyle Lolet, the neighboring streets, and Ed's apartment to conduct a search. The dolls were not found in his attic, but when the authorities opened the attic, it was a stench they were all too familiar with. Ed had burned all of his doll's organs in the stove and had gotten rid of the stinking sponges and clothing. Ed was interrogated for many hours, for many days, by successful militiamen, and his explanations were recorded. To soften him, they brought his mother in. She said if he wanted her to love him again, he had to tell them everything. It worked, but the softening took months. After his confessions, he called himself the cold surgeon. His wife, Gabrielle, confessed. Sometimes after SEX with me, he would be honest. He said he went to morgues and cemeteries, that if I didn't please him, he would be with the dead. I felt indifferent to him. He said I was tired. We didn't talk much. His sweater smelled of corpses. When I told him about it, he said I was just a lie to him. And when I saw another organ in the stove, he told me to take the children for a walk. Then I saw another B-R-E-A-S-T. He said if I told anyone what I saw, he would kill me. He would strangle me in the night. Made me swear not to tell anyone. She said her clothing would go missing, tights, underpants, and bras. He would get nervous, but then he would go buy her some more. And, of course, he was using those for the clothing to dress his dolls in. It's so disturbing. Can you imagine having to be with him after you know he had been at the cemetery? 
No way I'd be refusing any too. Oh, that's so gross. Investigators considered whether to press charges against Gabriella. She had known and had not told about Ed's crimes. It was decided that she should be let go because Ed had threatened to kill her and the children if she told anyone. On June 4, 1995, he was sentenced to death. Although he was convicted of only three murders, it was thought that he had actually murdered many more women. On July 28, 1996, Ed was hanged in the detention center in Poznan. His execution was the last one conducted there, and he was buried on August 1, 1996, in the same cemetery where he had dug up some of his victims. This is a truly terrifying serial killer story. Can you imagine being with a man like that? Mm-mm, honey, I wouldn't be sleeping with you either. That's disturbing on so many levels. Anyway, all right, guys, I love y'all, and I hope y'all have a blessed, wonderful week. And I will see y'all next time at the Murder She Shed. And hit that subscribe button if you're new. We'd love to have you at the Murder She Shed. Bye. Come join me at the Murder She Shed we, where we, where we, where we, yeah, we're going to discuss something if I can speak. Polish serial killer Edmund Kola, 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 I just looked this up. Kolonski. Kolonski. Polish serial killer Edmund Kolonowski. 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 Kolonowski, like colon. Polish serial killer Edmund Kolonowski. Today. Colin, I was so shocked I finally kind of got it that I didn't keep going. Polish serial killer Edmund Kolonowski. Kolonowski. Colin's freaking Noski. There comes the toot. The toot. There comes the Mr. Toot 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 Toot. What are you doing, Toot Toot? You need to go lay down, Toot Toot. I'm busy. I'm in the middle of the story here. Don't it. Dude, you're messing up my microphone. I'm going to start it back over. I think it's Kolonowski. Kolonowski. Shit, I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Just expect that it's going to not be pronounced right, okay? Before you correct me in the comments. I'm giving you a heads up on that, okay? That's also free of charge. After his confessions, he called himself the cold surgeon. Wow. The cold surgeon. I suppose you get that because the dead are cold and he cut on them. Yeah, I don't have to explain that, do I? And I got another question. Why in the world would you not check the attic? Did you not want to know what was going on? I'd be out of there so fast. I'd check the attic. And I wouldn't be hanging around when I seen these dolls dressed in my clothing with fake apparatuses on. And yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, just no. Murder, murder, she shed, murder, murder, she shed, murder, murder, she shed, murder, murder, she shed. You know, I'm weird and I do like to visit old cemeteries. I never had the desire to dig up a grave though. But I do like to visit them. I think they're really interesting. And they just have a weird feeling about them. And I don't know. I just like to visit occasionally. Is that weird? Do you guys like to visit old cemeteries? Maybe I'm just weird. Could be. I am weird. That's for sure. There's no doubt about that. Here comes our little buddy. Here comes our little buddy. Say bye. Say bye. Say we love you and we hope you have a wonderful week. And we're glad you could visit us at the Murder She Shed. Have you been good today? Tell them you've been wild. No, you haven't been good. You're lying. You're lying. You have not been good. You're just a lying little guy. You've been kind of ugly. You and Max both been kind of ugly. Yes, y'all have. Y'all been ornery and not nice. What's new about that? You are shedding so bad. Look at that. Horrible shed. I'm going to go give you a hair brushing. All right, love y'all.